It's good to be back in Kispiox. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I got property not far from here in between Vanderhoof and Prince George, a little uh, community called Al Pierre. God has led me from Canada to the U.S. Praise the Lord. Back to Canada, the third trip to Canada this year. Hallelujah. We took a trip to the Philippines. Thank you all that's prayed for us. We covered a lot of territory when we were in the Philippines. Amen. The Bible says it's time for us to preach the gospel in regions beyond. Not just in our back door, not just at the church right here. But praise God, the Bible speaks about launching out into the deep to letting down our nets for the drought. And bring in a great multitude of fishes. This is the reward that we need. Amen? Amen. I need a reward. I don't want to get to my final last breath and on my deathbed say, Lord, I could have done more. Lord, I should have done this. I should have done that. And, and, and look at it that way. When all along where God has given us the tools now, he's put finances in many of our hands. You young men out there, you've got so many years ahead of you. It's unreal the amount of energy that God can use and you can demonstrate and get out here in the streets, the lanes. And you don't have to be behind the pulpit. You might not even be called to be behind the pulpit. You might not even be called, hallelujah, to be a pastor or a teacher. But you are called to be a soul winner. Yes. Amen? Yes. And he that wins souls is wise. Yes. I like that scripture in Daniel. I can't quote it. And I used to be able to quote it. But it says, he, he that's wise shall bring many stars like the stars that's in the firmament. Amen. That means these stars are going to be in your crown. A soul winner's crown. Paul said, henceforth there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me. But not only just for me, but it's for everybody that believes. Yeah. Mark 16 in the Bible says, these signs will follow those that believe. Yeah. They shall cast out devils. They shall heal the sick. They shall speak in other tongues. And if they lay hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. I encourage so many people. Hallelujah. You know, we often think when we lay hands on the sick that we're healing them. We're not healing them. Amen. Amen. We lay hands. We pray in Christ's stead. We operate as ambassadors for Christ. Able ministers of the New Testament. And I come here tonight, this is our last night, I wish we could be here for a week, because we got so much stuff to say, and hallelujah, so many testimonies to bring, but praise God, time doesn't permit, it's just like the Bible says about Jesus, even the books itself, even the world itself couldn't contain the books, amen? That's how a Christian should be, a Christian should be a living testimony, amen? Amen? As a matter of fact, I like what the epistle says, that we are the written epistles. Amen. That we, when men look upon us, the Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works to glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. So they'll see you, but they'll be glorified of the Father in heaven because Jesus is shining through us like lights in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation because we are facing a crooked and perverse generation where they're calling good evil. Right. And then they turn right back around and calling evil good. It's a double standard that the government's got and that the society's got nowadays. Because it changes. Amen? It even goes deep into the corruption of the mayor and into the police force. Amen? But Jesus said, when I say to one, I say to all. So every word in this book applies to us. There's nothing here that needs to be left out. Every word of God is poor, is, is, is pure. Line must be upon line. Precept must be upon precept. For we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen. Amen. And if anything that else comes out 
from that Bible that's not in that Bible, it's not even on the playing field. The Bible talks about the showbread table. It's not even of the showbread table. It doesn't even come into existence because it's going to melt away. Heaven and earth will melt away, but this right here, brothers and sisters, will never melt away. This here word of God, I was witness to an atheist today, and he was, he was telling me his atheistic uh, uh, view on life. And I said, L let me tell you something. He said, well, won't you just tell me one of your stories? I said, I don't believe in stories because these passages and these scriptures in the Bible are biblical in accounts. Amen? Amen. The words of all the prophets and the saints of the Lord are biblical scriptures. Amen? These are something that we can stand upon. Amen. When the devil comes against us with all of his might, praise God, we can stand having our feet therefore shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, loins girded down with truth, and having a sword which is the spirit of God and the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. This is what warriors need to have. That song said that we're singing and dancing about, take a stand for Jesus. Yes, amen. We have got to take a stand against the death in our area right here. We have got to take a stand against the witchcraft. We have got to take a stand against the sorcery. We have got to take a stand against the drugs. Yes, amen. Putting in these head shops and selling marijuana ain't going to help nobody. Amen. It, it disgusts me how the devil gets in. And you know how he's coming in? He's coming in just a little bit at a time. And then once the doors open, here comes the flood of filth. Uh -huh. I never thought I'd see the day when drugs would be sold like candy on the street corners. Right. You go down to Maine and Hastings and you'll see it. Fentanyl. People, so many people are overdosed on fentanyl. This is nothing but candy from the devil. This is nothing about poison from China. Poisoning our young people. That's right. Hallelujah. Starts out with just a, taking a little hit of weed, but praise God, uh, then it progresses. Uh, you see, the devil is, the Bible talks about the devil, and it talks about the transgressors coming to the fall. We are servants to whom we obey. If we obey God and we, and we serve the Lord and yield to the Lord, then we become righteous in his eyes. Not our own righteousness, but the righteousness of God. And we put on the armor of God and we're clothed with the white robe that Jesus said that represents the pureness in Christ. His robe was one piece and he said, walk as I walk. Following the footsteps of the king. Amen. That's our example. Amen. Not to follow this movie star religion. $3,000 suits. $500,000 cars. Multi-million dollar jets and helicopters. Sure, if we need a helicopter or a jet, we'll use it to fly overseas. But praise God, we don't need an $18,000 chandelier hanging in here. When their souls go to hell. Amen. Yes. And when there's poor to be fed. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God wants us to stand up for the truth. Amen. My message today, tonight, without amen. saying too much. Amen. Because I got a lot to say because I only come around here other once in a while. And I feel like you are my brothers and sisters. And I feel accepted. And when I preach the word, I feel the word goes out. And it's dropping into you guys' a spiritual bank. And you're receiving the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I welcome the amen corner. I welcome the glory to God. I welcome Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I come to here today to make a declaration. If you got, if you got time to follow, if you, you don't have to follow, but if you just want to listen. Sometimes it's just good to listen to the word of God. But I want to read this out of the book of Luke chapter 1, yes. verse 1. This is what the scripture tells us. For as much as many have taken into hand to set forth in order of a declaration of the things which are most surely believed among us. You see, we have to take a declaration. Do you know what a declaration is? It's what Joshua and Caleb did. We've got to put our foot down and take a stand for what we believe. Yes. Not a, a double standard. We say one thing in the church 
Then we leave this church and we go a couple hundred miles down the road and we're living another life. That's a double standard. You know, I read that little plaque outside the sanctuary right here on the wall and it said something about a deacon must not be double-tongued. Uh-oh. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? She must have wrote that on there. Amen. Praise God. We must be of a sober mind. God does not want us to be wishy-washy like the sea waves roaring. Amen. Tossed about with every wind and doctrine of this world. Because I'm telling you, the devil's going to come against us with everything he's got. You read the book of Revelations. You read chapter 12. And the Bible says that the woman ready to be travailing, ready to give birth to the man-child. And there is going to be a man-child. There is going to be some sons of God. There is going to be some people that reach the full-fledged, perfect son of God, the perfect fullness of Christ. It's got to be. But when she travailed and ready to give birth, the Bible says that dragon stood in front of the woman ready to devour the man-child as soon as it was born. We have got to be careful and not to be ignorant of the devil's devices because he seeks to such to destroy. The Bible says that he's as a roaring lion. He ain't the roaring lion like I said last night because the roaring lion is the tribe of Judah. That's Jesus Christ. And he's always going to mimic and copy what Jesus is about to do. And what Jesus is about to do in the earth is birth a dead raising, sin killing revival. And we have got to declare it to whom the arm of the Lord has got to be revealed. Listen, this is Titus 3 and 8. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men and women. Where you see the word men in the Bible, you can put the word, the word woman too. Because the Bible said he made male and female in, in the image of God. God created both male and female. We're equal heirs with Christ Jesus. My Bible says there is no respect of persons. So it's time for us to make our declaration. I like to quote it like we got to make our calling and election sure. Amen? 1 Corinthians 1 or 12 and 3. The Bible says no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Hear me now. This is our faith, even our victory. The power of life and death is in our tongue. There could be our loved ones on the bed of death right now, and if we could confess them, get them to confess in their mouths the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in their heart that God has raised him from the dead. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, they will be saved. That is what our job as a preacher and as a witness of the Lord to do is to get men saved. A declaration of the thing which most certainly believed among us. It can't be a double standard. This is what Luke said in chapter 1 and verse 1. 1 John chapter 4, 2. Know you that the Spirit of that know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is, is, is of God. Is come. Not has come. He's not a has been. Jesus dwells in the mortal flesh. I'm not talking about uh, 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the face of the earth. I'm talking about today. November. This November. He's walking and talking in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. This is what the world needs. They don't need religion. Religion, creeds ain't going to save nobody, but Jesus Christ's blood will. A transformation from light to darkness will. I told that atheist today, I said, if you've seen the, the pit that opened up and that awful porthole to hell that I've seen, then you wouldn't want to 
want to go back no more. And furthermore, I told him, I said, if it was a hallucination, which I was hallucinating for two, three days straight on six double hits of LSD, orange double barrel, high for three days and three nights, found myself in the graveyard, not worshiping God, being a worshiper of Satan. These spirits the Lord has revealed to me, the witchcraft and the sorcery spirits that's fighting us is the principality over the air. This is what we're fighting. That's why Paul said we fight the good fight of faith. We stand firm. And the Bible says pray always that you be able to stand before the Son of Man. Looking after the things that are coming upon the earth. For the whole earth is going to be shaken and plagues, pestilence. And when they say peace, peace, then comes sudden destruction. So we have got to make a declaration. And if we can get them to confess. That Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Amen. You know, even though that lady was inebriated to the, she, I don't know where she was. You know where that, she's past that bridge, that, that bridge, that narrow bridge. There's no houses out there. And she was just on the street. Late last night, we stopped and picked her up. And I handed the brothers, I was driving, I handed the brothers the holy oil. I said, anoint her with oil. And they did pray the prayer of faith over, and I think they, did she confess the Lord? She received the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen? So it's up to them, hallelujah, to make the call and election. My Bible says, Paul said, he said, let every man and woman be persuaded in their own mind. We have got to be fully persuaded in our own mind and, and, and work out our own salvation. Amen? Your dedication, you don't impose upon me because, hallelujah, God might have spoke to you for a specific reason. My dedication might be different than yours. It's not a dedication and it's not of works to any man boast, but hallelujah, we got to be having Jesus exhibited in our life on every corner if we want to live according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we want the power of God. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. Let me dig that out. I want to read that. One thing about it, we're getting the word here in the church tonight, aren't we? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. I'll probably read verse 6. The Bible says, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness. See, the Spirit will bear us witness, brothers and sisters. The Spirit will confirm to us that we are His child. Amen? He ain't going to let us get away with this and that. Whom the Lord loves us, He chastises us many times. Yes. He ain't going to let us off the hook that easy, is He? Because He loves us. He wants to chastise us. It's been said that the sheep that got out of the pen, the, the shepherds would break the leg of that sheep if it kept getting out. To teach it a lesson to keep it in the pen. Because the 99 is saved in the fold. And this is not a time for us to fall back and, and get out of church. And, and let the devil give you a beat down. You get outside the four walls of this church. And, and there's no, there, if there's no fellowship out there for you. And there's no praying going on. No fasting, no seeking God, no laying hands on you. The devil's going to come at you. And he'll try to pull the wool over your eyes. And he'll try to hoodwink you. And then John 10 says, the thief comes in, but not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It starts out as just a little thing, but then it grows. But if we can get people to confess the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, that's the battle and it's being won right there. Because I'm here to proclaim tonight. In Kispiox, that there is going to come a Chicano glory. Yeah. See, the Lord revealed to me a couple years ago. He said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. You see, sin will take us farther than we want to go and cost us more than we want to pay and keep us longer than we want to stay. But if we can learn to obey Jesus, uh, amen, and walk in the Spirit as He is in the Spirit, we will have fellowship one with another. Amen. And the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all iniquity. I'm not preaching to you condemnation today. I'm preaching to you life and life more abundantly. Amen. The priest that went in beyond the veil and he... T- and he went in past the veil. Praise God. He had to be free from sin. They tied a cord to him. And if they didn't hear that bell ringing. Amen. Praise God. They knew the priest had sin in his life. This is the time when we're coming into the holy ground. Yeah. It is. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Right. Look at here. Let's turn over here to. Exodus chapter 3. And I know everybody's familiar with these passages. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And came to the mountain of God, even Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. I want you to note here, when Moses finally seen that burning bush, see, the bush was not consumed. The Bible said the Lord appeared to him in a bush, in a flaming fire. The flame, the bush was not on fire, but it was appeared to him in a flaming fire. God wants to appear to us in a flaming fire. He said, the Bible says, our God is a consuming fire. Listen, the Bible said if the first administration was glorious, how much more shall the second administration be? Amen? If what they had in the Old Testament was glorious, with a pillar of cloud following them by day, and and a pillar of fire protecting them by night, and, and we're supposed to have the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to have a greater than what they had. Well, where is our power? Amen. Wait a second here. Amen? Amen. <laughs> what's happened? i tell you what's happened. The devil has tricked us. The devil has deceived us. He has stolen from us because he's fearful. He's fearful of this church of Kiss the Ox. Because he knows there's going to be some people coming out here that are going to raise the dead. Amen? Amen. He knows that there's going to be people that are going to leave this church. And they're going to take God for his word at face value. And and fashion themselves after the gospels. And hear the word the prophets have said. And they're going to walk circumspectly. Amen? And they're going to walk uprightly. Not halfway. Not three quarters away. But be like Joshua and Caleb. Follow the Lord wholly. And then he said, wherever you put your foot down. He's going to give us the land. We have a land of our anointing. Some of you are going to go to places up here and the reservations and the different places that I don't know about or that I can't reach. Some of you, the hand of God is going to rest upon you by dream and by vision and God will commission you. It will be a still small voice. But if you obey God's work, hallelujah, in his word, you will do a marvelous transformation of the people that you've gone to. I've seen it. God shocked me and blew my doors off when we went to Philippines. Hundreds got saved in one service. 400 people got saved and come forth and received the the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and confessed with their mouth and believed in their heart because tears of joy were streaming down their faces. And many was the slain of the Lord. The glory of the Lord was so thick that they, they couldn't stand. They just fell out. One fella, we just had something to eat at night, about 11.30 at night after we had preached. The brother said, hey, this brother needs prayer outside. I said, okay. I walked outside, got my holy alone. I just touched him. I touched that guy. He fell immediately to his knees. Bam! His hands went up. I didn't tell him to put his hands up. 
He started confessing his sins, started crying out. The whole restaurant looked at him. He's, oh! Then he started speaking in tongues. He got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He received forgiveness of his sins in about two seconds. And we spend 45 minutes to an hour convincing somebody that they need the Holy Ghost here in America. Because they're not hungry. The Bible says, Pastor, they're hungry and thirsty after righteousness. For seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be added unto you. Yes. And Moses here, seeing the burning bush, and he'll sit, he said, I'll now turn aside. God wants us to turn aside. And the Bible says when he turned aside, then God's voice called him, Moses, Moses. The place where you're at is holy ground. When we arrive here where the Lord wants us to arrive, the Chicano glory will come down. It'll be like a cloud. I read in the Bible. I used to think it was just a cloud and I see the pictures. No, I've done a serious study since I've now been here in Canada and I, I found out that glory cloud was thick. It covered the tabernacle. They were in that, that thick cloud. Do you hear me? They were in that thick cloud. Second, I think it's Second Corinthians. Sisters almost read it. Second Corinthians, or First Corinthians, I think it's 10, 10, 4, yeah, no, 10. Second Corinthians, 10. First Corinthians, 10, 1. Moreover, brethren, brothers and sisters, listen, I would not that you should be ignorant that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. What the Lord showed me, the baptism is a progression. You, we just don't stop at the, getting in the water and getting fully submerged and being baptized there. Because the Bible says the baptism of John was the baptism of repentance and remission of sins. Turn, turn with me, Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. How many agree that John the Baptist, he was not the Elijah? He came in the spirit of Elijah because they asked him, Art thou the Elijah? He said, No, I am the one that was the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make the path straight. Yes. We've got to straighten up, is what I'm getting at. We've got to walk right, spit right. Because if we want the Chicano glory back in the kingdom of God, back amongst us, if we want to see that, well, you know, when the first year that I came here, a big, turbulent funnel of the Holy Ghost appeared right here. That's why I'm here. Amen. Hallelujah. The Chicago glory wants to be right here. Yes. He wants to visit us right here. Yes. Yes. We, I don't want to miss this day, this visitation, right here. Yes. That funnel came right down and began to turn. And everybody that was in that line today fell out under the power of God and began speaking in tongues. Actually, I began speaking in tongues. I felt such a holiness that I spoke in tongues. And one of the brothers heard me say in his language that it's going to be all right and everything, we're going to get it done. We are going to get it done. Amen. We are going to be all right if we abide in him and he abides in us. Yes. What I'm showing you here, the Bible says, John said, bring forth meat, fruit, meat for repentance. He called them a brood of vipers. And he told them in verse 10 that the axe is put to the root of the tree. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is going to be hewn down. The word Greek means there, means the axe is actually at the root of the tree, waiting. See, the minute we don't bear forth fruit, hallelujah, the Lord is seeking for such to worship him in spirit and truth. We're going to be cut down. Because he's told the vineyard owner, 
Why cumbereth it the ground? Cut it down. And then he said, no, wait. Let me dig around you and dung you. Let the Lord fertilize you today with the word of God. Amen? Amen. Let him put some fertilizer on us so this word, so you can grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the word can take root in your heart and bring forth some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But this is the time that 30 fold ain't going to get it done, brothers and sisters. We need a double portion. We need what Elisha had. We need a double portion of the Holy Ghost. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost with fire. Look at verse 12, 10. No, I made 11. I need baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes lasted. I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Fire burns up the dross. Verse 12, who stands in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor. When Jesus gets done, the book of Malachi says, out of the furnace of affliction, I've chosen you. And he'll thoroughly purge the floor. He'll sit under a finer's fire and a fuller soap. See, Jesus wants to cleanse the church. He did it back then. He, he, he over-tipped the, the changes of the money table. And he said, make not my house a house of merchandise. God's people, and, and as soon as the preachers get a little bit of fame, they want to make some kind of a merchandise out of the word of God. Not so. Their tables are going to be turned around and turned upside down. And Jesus is going to take up that whip through his servants, the prophets. And they're going to receive a scourging in their life. Yes. And be evicted from the house of God. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to clean house. He said judgment first must go forth from the house of God. It must begin at the house of God. And Ezekiel 9 talks about a marking going on for those that sigh and cry. Some of these mega churches, you can't even pray no more. There ain't no more altars open no more. You start to shed a tear, they're going to escort you out the church. No crying no more. No more anguish no more. No more real pain going on in the churches no more. But he said right there, seek ye the Lord while you may be found. Another scripture said of my people, call by my name, humbles themselves to pray, seeks my face, turns from the wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven and I'll hear your land of Kispiox, Kipwankul, Kipwonga, Burns Lake, Wabasquaw, all the way from here to Saskatchewan. The Lord is going to fall with fire from heaven. I see it in the vision. Hallelujah. And it's coming this way. I want to be underneath that Chicano glory. Don't you? Hallelujah. You know, when they were, when they were following Moses from Egypt to the promised land, the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night never departed from them. It was there day and night. And the Bible said it rested upon the tent of the tabernacle. And it was thick like a cloud. And if it rested for one month, the children of Israel didn't journey without it. See, we can't go nowhere without the Holy Ghost. We've got to have the Holy Ghost. If we're going to get this done, we've got to have greater that's within us than he that's within the world. We've got to arm ourselves likewise and get ready to do battle. And I'm calling for warriors today. I might be small in stature, but I'm a fighter for God. Hallelujah. I'll fight to the death. Hallelujah. Because I know our reward is great, brothers and sisters. And there's a baptism of the fire that Jesus wants to give us. Amen. He handed the cup to him. And he said, are you able to drink of this cup? And his disciples said, yes, we are able. And then Jesus responded back, you truly are able. Amen. But we got to drink it all. We have to eat of his flesh and drink of his blood if we want this life in us. See, the life of the flesh is in the blood and he's given to us as an atonement upon the altar for our sins. We have to eat the whole roll. Amen. Every word of God is pure. Man shall not live by bread alone, brothers and sisters, but by every word of God that proceeds forth out of his mouth. We have to eat this word if we want to be strong. This is not a time for us to just keep sipping milk. Amen. He wants us to have meat 
to eat. A full course meal. How many know just with a little snacks and, and a little bit of dessert? That's not going to get you for far, is it? If you will go out here and fall trees or cut firewood, you're going to need a full course meal. Jesus wants us to feed us the meat. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Eat his flesh. See, when the saints get hard, that's when the disciples backed up. Amen? The Bible says in John 6, verse 66, from that time forth, many of the disciples went no more, no more with him. They turned around. There's a backsliding spirit out here causing people to backslide and go an easy way. But I'm here to tell you, you backsliders, that the way of the transgressor is hard. Yes. Amen? Yes. And Paul said, if I build the game, the thing which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. Sin is the transgressor of the law. Yes. By the deeds of the flesh shall no man be justified. It's by grace through faith through the Holy Ghost. Paul said it. I'll show you a more excellent way. I wouldn't leave home without the Holy Ghost. I would not go into battle without a gun, would you? You'd be foolish. Jesus is telling us to arm ourselves. Amen. Likewise. Yes. He's, he's commanded us to do the work of the evangelist. Amen? Amen? What does the evangelist do? The evangelist brings the good word. Amen? He brings the life. Amen? He's an extension of God's hand. But Abel ministry. Jesus ain't coming back to preach this. We're doing the job for Jesus. He's commissioned us. He says, as the Father sent me, even so send I you. If you receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, you shall receive a righteous man's reward. And if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. God wants the church to prosper. How many knows God wants the church to flourish? Yes, yes. Some 30, 60, and 100 fold. But I read in the Gospels where he said 100 fold at this time. Why? Because we're going to need a greater move of God than what they had back then at the book of Acts because the demons are being released. The Bible talks about in Revelations uh, that there is war in heaven uh, and the might of his angels fought against the giant and his angels uh, and there was neither found no more place for the devil and his angels in heaven and they were cast down. We are down to earth and he said, Woe be unto the heaven angels of the earth and see the devils come down unto you having great wrath. He knows he has but a short time. So he's going to fight for your soul. There's no redemption for the devil. Don't listen to this doctrine where some of these people are preaching the devil can get saved. He's done, can't get saved. He's crossed the point of no return. Eternal damnation. If you go to hell at night, you go to hell as an intruder. The hell is not made for mankind, but for the devil and his angels. Hell from beneath has an enlarged itself to receive you out the coming. The Bible said, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a hell to get rid of today. Amen? I used to have the same when I was in the world getting high and dope. The more the merrier. And hell with it. Yeah? You keep going down that road to destruction. You're going to see what I've seen. You're going to be burnt with the fire. It's called eternal fire. With a word died not, the fire is not cleansed. Uh, Sixty times, seventy times out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, he warned us that there was a hell and a punishment for those that obey not the gospel. For hence it's appointed that the men and women wants to die after this judgment. The books are going to be opened, my friend. Judgment's going to be set. And our names are better be found. Written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm here to tell you. A book of remembrance is being wrote. Hallelujah. Check the Bible when I'm preaching. It's the truth. That's why Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. And the life. If him that comes up any other way. You you try to come in another way. I'm here to tell you. Drugs is false. Drugs is a counterfeit of the Holy Ghost. I told that guy today. If that was a hallucination that I was on. It would have wore off. 40 years later. It ain't wore off. I'm still high on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm still receiving the revelation of Jesus Christ. My eyes are still being opened. Hallelujah. I'm still fearing the hair, hair stand up on my back. I'm still fearing the fear of God. I'm still fearing the holiness of God. We'd be 
foolish to turn back now. Woe be unto those that go down to Egypt and make their arm the flesh. Some trust in chance, some trust in silver, but I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord, brother, is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it. These songs that are being sung, they have meaning to it. Amen? we got to take the Lord for face value and say, Lord, it's not my brother that needs the Holy Ghost. It's me. You see, we can't get the counterfeit. We can't just get a catch of it and stop the baptism of John with baptism of the water of repentance. But we need what they had in the book of Acts 2, chapter 38. Amen. The Holy Ghost sat upon them with cloven tongues as a fire, as a spirit to give them our friends. Hallelujah. It sat on every one of them. It was like a mighty rushing wind. Yeah. It's going to come. Yeah. When we come into that unity of the faith and we keep some of our garbage outside that door. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I saw a policeman outside the door of my church and I was wondering in a dream. I said, Lord, why is the policeman outside the door of the church? Thank you, brother. God bless you. Stay there for a second. God bless you. Shikamala, Erikonsi, you know, Tobuchi, Chamutas, Tahai. Even I, the Lord, does elevate you up this day and give you an upgrade. And I lift you up because you have obeyed my voice. And if you've been a servant, and if you've walked circumspectly, then you check your spirit going in and out of the church. I, the Lord, will begin to bless your feet and guide you, and I'll lift up a standard for your family and will rebuke the devourer. Even the offerings and the alms that you have given are to rebuke the devourer. And when the devourer comes in to steal, to kill, and to destroy, I will send him to another household. For I, the Lord, does lift up a standard and put a hedge of protection around about you. Glory. Hallelujah. What was that about? I'm obeying God. Amen. Nothing I do is by script. And I don't write this stuff down. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time to get formality out of the church. Jesus Christ is reality, yes. not formality, not religious creeds. But when we get that, like I see that policeman outside my church and I ask the Lord, why is there a policeman outside the church? And the Lord said, I'm checking spirits going into the church and I'm checking spirits coming out of the church. Because we can get to church and leave with a bad spirit. We didn't even have that bad spirit. We leave with a bad spirit coming into the church. We have to be able to sit amongst brothers and sisters if they've done us wrong and speak in tongues with the one right next to us, even if he's done us wrong. Seven times 70, we've got to be able to forgive our brothers. These are the hard sayings that Christians don't want to do. We don't just pick part of the word of God out and say, I'm going to listen to this and listen to that. And I'm going to omit that. I'm telling you what will happen to you. Revelation 22 says if we take from and if you add to the words of this book, he'll take from you the book, your name of the book of life and add to you the plagues that's written in the book of Revelations when the vials are going to be outpoured. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and believe that you might have life in His name. For the salvation in no other name but at the name of Jesus, my friend. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Paul stood up on Mars Hill and he said, I declare unto you, and you you're ignorant and you, you have an altar up saying to an unknown God, I declare to you the unknown God, his name is Jesus. Amen. Jesus come in the expressed image of the Father. He told the Jews, except you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Our sins are only remitted through Jesus Christ. None other name given. That's the family name. Jesus came out of the bosom of the Father. And if, you, if he came in another name, we'd receive him. But he came in the name of the Father. Yes. Jesus is real. Yes. And he wants to commission us to do the work of the evangelist and set forth a declaration. If we don't, kiss me off church, hear me. If we don't stand for something today, the devil is just going to continue to trick, to deceive.
deceive and to destroy. We have got to take a bold stand for righteousness and true holiness and put our foot down and go back. We can actually go back down to the enemy's camp like David did and take back everything that the devil has stolen from us. We can without fail recover all. Amen? You're not too old, nor are you too young. You young people here, you're not too young. Samuel administered his ministry started at a young age. Timothy, the young man, a young age. Don't give yourselves to the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Don't yield to fornication and uncleanness, you young women. Let the Lord use you as one of his handmaids that he said in the book of Joel. He would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. I'm telling you that the darkest hour is upon us. It is a great day, but it's also a terrible day. It's a day of God's darkness upon God's people. It's a great of great perversion that's taken over the church and an apostasy that's moved into the church. But our jobs as a deacon and as the preacher and the pastor, we have got to lay down the word. The plummet line is being dropped today. And then it's the standard of the Lord. He said, awaken the mighty men of war. Awaken to righteousness and sin not. Some have not the knowledge of God. It's time to get the knowledge of God instilled in our hearts. I'm telling you what, the Ark of Covenant is coming back. And those souls that bear the Ark of the Covenant must be sanctified. No shortcuts. No shortcuts, brothers and sisters. Make your calling and election sure. If we do these things, we'll never fail. Sure, the devil might slip us up sometime. We might get a little bit disturbed. But we have the advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. There's no one sin can be not forgiven. That's the sin of blasphemy. That's, right. That's taking the works of God and contributing them to the devil. Amen. Nobody would be in this church today if they committed blasphemy. Amen? Amen. You could be in deep old call witchcraft like I was in worshiping the devil and the Lord could still touch your heart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I found myself in that graveyard Friday the 13th. Yeah. That night I went there to sell my soul to the devil. That night I went to get to the bottom of it. It was do or die. But Jesus had a different experience ready for me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A light from another universe. I told that atheist today, I don't care what you say. A light from another universe. You, you were high, you were drinking. Yeah, I took a lot of dope that day, but that hallucination would have worn off, but now it's still with me. I still feel God. I still remember. I can take you to the exact place when that light appeared to me in the graveyard. Friday the 13th, at about midnight, in that graveyard. We had with us, don't you young people, don't listen to this old rock music. This is demonic. It contains enchantments and spells and curses from the devil. Uh-huh. I could tell you stuff that would make your hair stand up. Pink Floyd, Iron Maiden, Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath. All these bands are preachers of Satan. Dick, we preach righteousness and you hear the songs of praise you hear. They sing songs and they glorify their devil, which is their father, the father of lies. But it's all lies. And there's no lie that's in the truth. It's real. Brothers and sisters, many of people have sold out for witchcraft, for the lust of the flesh, and, and for a little bit of fame, for pleasures of sin, for a season. It ain't worth it. It's not worth it. Hell from beneath has enlarged itself, Isaiah, to meet you after common. The Bible states that hell is beneath and heaven is above. Jesus said it's a place of darkness, not light. He said it's eternal separation from God. The wages of sin is death. Death means he's separated from God for all eternity. It's real. I've seen it. I've seen hell from beneath. I've seen the porthole of hell open up. 
I can tell you it's the most awful stink and the awful smell that you ever could smell. Fire. Such a power and such a pressure that was unbelievable. But at the side of that pit, brothers and sisters, preachers, uh, teachers, evangelists, at the side of that pit, I see men and women of God reaching down over into the pit and pulling them out. We can do it. We can extend our hand of love and mercy to fellow mankind that's out there. One soul is, equals one jewel in your crown. In closing, back home, the Lord finally told me and my wife, you're doing, you're trying to do too much. I said, well, wait a second. Lord, I'm zealous. I want to do everything. And he said, well, just take a look at what you're doing. You want to get the soul saved? You want to give them a job? You want to pick them up and take them to work? And you want to pick them up and take them to the church? The Lord said, no, let me do some of this. One plants, one waters, God gives that increase. It's because he set it up in such a way that he gets the glory and we don't. Hallelujah. When we begin to humble ourselves in the mighty sight of God, then he will give us the promotion. A contrite and a right heart and a broken heart, he will no wise despise. This is Brother Ron and the team out here in Kispiox, B.C., Canada. We've had a great crusade this year. This has been the best year of my evangelism. Best year. My evangelism. God has actually made a way with finances and people uh, blessing us with their letting us stay in their home and, and people picking us up and people cooking us food like you all. God has blessed us so much. This is our third trip to Canada. And when we come to Canada, we just don't preach in one place. We preach in usually about 14 different places, spanning from the mid Alberta to Saskatchewan, all the way to Vancouver, Vancouver Island, all the way up to Kispiox and back around to Edmonton. We make a full circuit. We have to drive sometimes 10, 12, 14 hours, praise God, to preach the gospel because we've got a fire burning in our our souls. Hallelujah. You see mankind deliver. God made a way for us to go to the Philippines. We were there for 30 days solid and we preached probably at least 30 times because that crazy brother Richard had us preaching sometimes two and three times a day. Well, I believe in that sometimes, but sometimes we've got to have a little bit of rest and a little bit of leisure and it's time to get vamped up for God. Not just preach once a week or just have a, a Sunday school here or just a rally every other month. God wants us to rally daily. Yeah. Hallelujah. I read in the Bible that daily we're in the temple. When I get home, praise God, I don't just go to sleep and, and, and go on a vacation. When I get home, hallelujah, the church is a mile and a half from my house. I get into that church in prayer. Because I know if you want some power, you got to pray. No prayer, no power. And let me tell you a little secret that the Lord let me on. The more people you can gather together in the prayer with you, one will put a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand, three full quarters, not easily broken. A communicative prayer works better than just one man praying by themselves. Because you can bust loose the heavens, amen, and pull down principalities, and that's what this area needs. The prince and the power of the air can press all he wants. I got a picture of a demon that was looking in the window yesterday. I went outside the window and measured him. He looks about nine feet tall. That's what's fighting our church right here. We have got to stand up, children of God. When David faced that giant, he faced that giant with confidence. He said, I will slay this uncircumcised Philistine. There's some giant slayers in here today. Amen? Amen. We got giants out here to face. You will say, I ain't got the armor on yet. Well, it's time to get the armor on, amen? It's time to get fully clothed because none of us are going to appear before the Lord. I know I'm rambling on a lot. None of us appear before the Lord with the clothes we got on. These three-piece suits and these fancy suits that I like to wear them sometimes, we are not going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ in a suit or any piece of clothing. Even the great man Elijah, his anointed mantle fell to the ground. We appear before the judgment seat of Christ naked. 
But the Apostle John seen that they were clothed with white robe. He seen, he looked into the future and he said, who are these and whence came they? These are those that come out of great tribulation and wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. These are those that follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Uh, hallelujah. These are those that are blood-bought, sold-out Christians. See, God will test you with your family if you really need business of God. Amen. This is the time to go all in like the poker player. Amen. You're going to put everything into the pot and leave nothing behind. It's a table stakes game and the winning hands belong to Jesus. Yeah. Two nail scarred hands. This is Brother Ron and the team out here. I thank you all for giving us the opportunity to preach in your church here today. I really feel the power of God here. I, I can't explain it. I listen to the music. I record all this music and I bring, I bring it home and I make tracks and I listen to it day and night. Hallelujah. But we have got to have an increase. We can't remain stagnant. We can't remain at the place where we're at. We have got to have a furtherance. The Bible speaks of a baptism that we haven't received yet. And I want to strive and hunger for it, brothers and sisters. We haven't obtained it. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I've waged a good war. And there's a crown of righteousness is laid up for me. We must press towards the high calling in Christ Jesus. We have pressed towards that mark and to receive that consolation, which is the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can't be compared to any earthly possession. For if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul, what will it profit you? Amen. This is Brother Ron up here from South Carolina. I am a resident of Canada and the U.S. I am a dual citizen. Pray for our team because I want to go home and stay on fire for God. Amen? I don't want to let down my guard. I want to use what God gives me and I want more with it. You know how you get more of an increase? You use what you got. Hand out a track. Texting somebody, social media, further the gospel of Jesus Christ so your anointing can increase. Amen? Let's get an increase in Jesus Christ. Thank you all. May God bless you. Till next time, I love you. Do what? You want to pray for a thing? All right, if the musicians want to come, at this time we will want to pray with the people. Amen? Because we believe in prayer. Hallelujah. Everywhere we go, God is commissioning people. He's touching people with the Spirit of God. Amen. So if the musicians would like to come, I'd like to pray for people if they want prayer. Hallelujah.